Hi guys, my name is Dan and welcome to another episode of CryptoLite. Today, I want to introduce you a new blockchain project that I think has a lot of potential and that is the coin Loom. To find out more about the Loom network, keep watching this video. Loom is the next generation blockchain platform for large scale online games and social apps. Let me jump into the tech to explain to you what this project is all about. Currently, Ethereum is the world's biggest blockchain platform. Ethereum hosts hundreds of dApps or decentralized apps that is built directly on its blockchain. But because it has so many dApps that is sucking up its computational power, Ethereum has also become one of the slowest platforms as well. Where theoretically, Ethereum should be running at 1,000 transactions per second, practically it is only running at 16 transactions per second. Loom is a second layer platform that is built on Ethereum so that when you build dApps, you are strictly building on Loom, not on Ethereum. Furthermore, Loom dApps are not built on the Loom network, but they are actually built on as a side chain on the Loom. So those who have been following our channels will be very familiar with the concepts of side chains by now. Side chains are a popular off chain method to achieve scaling as then most of the computation is done on the actual side chain and not on the blockchain. So it doesn't burden the performance of the blockchain. The depths that Loom hopes to attract and build are mainly games and social media applications. Already, they have a couple of working products. As a game, they have Crypto Zombie, which is a depth game that teaches people how to use smart contracts. Crypto Zombie is about six months old and already has over 170,000 downloads and users. Delegate Call is a social media platform that is also currently functioning on Loom and is similar to Reddit or Steam where you can upvote and downvote, but it's revolving around questions and answers and as you upvote or downvote people can earn free tokens so furthermore because of the use of side chains loom hosts or can boast massive scalability potentially the platform can host mainstream games like world of warcraft whereas ethereum as a blockchain is currently still struggling with a single simple game like crypto kitties i think that the fact that loom has a working product is huge Someone recently shared this picture on our Telegram group chat and I thought it was hilarious but I also thought it was so true. I don't think that many people investing in cryptocurrency currently realize how difficult it is to get a working blockchain project out. They look at a project on white paper and they get really excited in the concept of the project believing that the end product will definitely be exactly as is described in the white paper. They haven't yet realized that the final product actually can look very different from the white paper. As an investor, investing into a project like Loom that already has a working product, to me, seems like a much lower risk because you know for a fact that the team can definitely deliver on their promises. Okay, coming back to the side chains. The side chains will benefit from both Loom and Ethereum as their foundations because they have a double foundation. So for example, they can use the consensus algorithm of Loom, which is a lot faster than Ethereum, while also utilizing the security features of the Ethereum network. Let me explain how this is done. So currently, Ethereum is using proof of work. And proof of work is, uh, requires every node to process and store every transaction on the system. It's a very secure process, but it's also very slow. Ethereum is planning to transition towards proof of stake. Proof of stake is a better consensus algorithm. However, proof of stake also has its weaknesses. The main weakness is that it risks losing decentralization because with proof of stake, the people who are rich can stake more and so they will earn more and then they can restake more again. And so over time, the rich will get richer and potentially monopolize the whole system, making it a very centralized way of consensus algorithm. Loom will be using the improved version of proof of stake, which is DPoS of delegated proof of stake. DPoS uses a voting system to ensure fairness in the system. It's also a lot faster than proof of work, and DPoS is probably one of the most popular consensus algorithm that is currently in use. Now, dApps that are built on Loom will be able to choose their own consensus algorithm. They don't have to use DPoS, they can use proof of work or proof of stake depending on the need of their project. If they wanted to, they could even create their own consensus algorithm. That's the power of building on a sidechain. 
Now, one of the downsides of using any faster consensus algorithm is that it is more centralized and less secure. So technically speaking, if I have a side chain that is using DPoS, dedicated proof of stake as is um, consensus algorithm, the chance of my asset on the side chain of losing it, okay, is actually higher than if I was to keep my asset on a secure system like Ethereum, which uses proof of work, but that is a lot slower and not very functional. So Loom will be using what is known as Plasma Cache technology to help them to improve the security of the assets on the Loom sidechains. Now, what is Plasma Cache? Plasma, as most of us would know, is an on-blockchain scalability solution designed for Ethereum. Plasma Cache is the new and improved version of Plasma that is promoted by Vitalik Buterin, the founder of Ethereum himself. The way Plasma Cache would work in Loom is something like, like this. An asset on the Ethereum blockchain can be represented on Loom as what is known as a non-fungible token, so NFT. Okay? This is a unique ID that is, uh, will provide identification and cannot be altered. Now, the NFT is what is used for transactions on the sidechain, and this NFT can later be converted back into Ether. But if for some reason, okay, the sidechain was compromised and the NFT was lost, the user will still have their original Ether value because the NFT at the end of the day was only a representation of the original Ether asset. In other words, Plasma Cash allows owners to transfer their assets to the sidechain while keeping the original value secure on the Ethereum network. The last significant piece of tech that I need to introduce to you guys about the Loom um, project is their SDK or Software Development Kit. Now, Loom makes it very easy for developers to develop dApps on their platform by providing an SDK that is super easy to use. The SDK is um, very intuitive, very simple. It's almost a click and drag kind of simple interface, which lowers the expertise level required to build dApps in Solidity to a beginner level. So this is very important in terms of lowering barriers to adoption so that people can, um, a lot of people can potentially use the platform to build their own dApps. The SDK will also be an open source in future, which means that in the future, all developers can contribute to the building of the actual SDK itself. So that's basically the tech of the Loom network. Loom network is essentially a second layer platform on Ethereum that allows large gaming and social dApps to be built on it whilst maintaining scalability and security. I think the project is a brilliant idea and they already have working dApps so we know that the technology works. Ethereum is the biggest platform that desperately needs a solution like this, so I think that Loom is potentially a game changer in the crypto scene. Now, Loom tokens are used to buy Loom membership. So anyone who wants to use the network or any app on it has to first buy the Loom membership, which costs only one token. One token costs $1.99 USD on their website, so it's very affordable. Now, many people have criticized uh, the cost to be too cheap and personally I agree with this as well. Now some of the bigger platforms out there, for example Neo, currently only has about 20 dApps on their platform. So even if Loom moved from, from just two apps which it has now to 20 dApps, essentially they would only have earned about $40, 40 USD dollars from the membership fees. Considering the project market cap is $287 million, $40 is nothing. You would literally need millions of new users every single day for the membership fees to affect the token price in a significant manner. And that's obviously not going to happen. You might get millions of users eventually, but you're not going to get millions of users every single day. Furthermore, the token is not actually used in any asset transfer. Okay? It works like a software license key where you need to have at least one token, a license to go ahead with the transfer, but in the actual transfer itself, the token is not being used. So where then is the token used on this project? Loom is hoping that the Loom tokens will be used by future dApps. So for example, if there's a new game that is being launched or built on the Loom platform, they are hoping that the new game might choose to use Loom tokens as its currency. However, future dApps are able to make their own currency and they do not have to use the Loom tokens should they choose not to. So there is no actual guarantee of high volume of token use. Now, as token investors, as I always say, when we buy tokens, it's different from buying shares of a company. 
When you buy the shares of the company, you are buying into the success of the company. But in cryptocurrency, when we buy tokens, you are only buying into the success of the currency of the token. So if the company doesn't use the tokens, the company and the technology can be very successful, but the token price doesn't rise and the token investor doesn't earn money. So I think moving forward, it will be very worthwhile for token investors to pay careful attention to the actual token use on this platform. Now, currently, there is only one tier of membership available, and that's the $1.99 membership. Um, Loom have announced that they are thinking of adding additional tiers of membership, so a casual developer, which is $19.99, so 10 tokens, and then a professional developer tier, which would charge $199, so 100 tokens. Now, $199 is still very, very cheap for a multi-million dollar project, but it would mean a lot better in terms of a profit margin. The challenge then that Loom would have to do is that 199, 100 tokens is 100 times more than 199. So then they will have to justify that the additional service uh, that they are offering for professional developers is worth that 100 times more membership. I mean, any project or any service that you use, if you use any cloud service at the moment, um, you know, there is no package that offers you 100 times more than the lowest package the, the discrepancy is just too big so the the details of the higher tier memberships are not released yet but there's something that um i think a lot of people will be paying attention to as professional developers there is something that also didn't quite make sense to me and that is that on their website they are selling one token for one dollar and 99 cents usd but on the exchanges, you can buy the exact same token for only 40 cents USD. So technically speaking, the website is currently selling the tokens for 500% more than the exchanges. This is crazy. I can understand the small discrepancy, 10%, maybe even a 20% difference, but a 500% difference? And the thing is, the team actually knows about this difference and they have explained in the Medium article that it's because the third-party resellers will buy and resell in bulk like the exchanges, whereas users of the platforms will only need 1 or 10 tokens, which is why it makes sense for users to then buy, uh, on the platform at the, buy the tokens on the platform at a higher price. But even that reasoning or rationale doesn't make sense something is wrong here because whatever excuse you make there is no reason why your website should be charging 500% more for a token 500% more is not fair sales no matter how you spin it and look at it if you want to pack the sale of a membership on your website to one token then the price of the token or the price of the membership must go up and down with the exchanges if the exchanges go down the price of your membership must also change but if you think that you know putting a pegging the membership to a token is too unstable for a website and you want to just peg the membership cost to 199 fix then you need to unpeg it from the one token and say that it now costs five tokens instead of one token because as a team you cannot just come up with your own valuation that on your own website that is so different from the exchanges and insist that it's going to be that way just because you want it to be that way because that's just not a fair way of doing things Furthermore, you will notice that $199 is the current discounted price. The original price of a token on their website was $4.99, which is a whooping 1,250% difference. Uh, that, that's crazy. So I think that the tech of this project is great, but I think that the economics is quite flawed. In the future, they will also have a token used in running nodes on the actual sidechain, but the details of this will, is yet to be released. This is the team that's running the project. It's a pretty big team. They have three co-founders. The first co-founder is called James um, Duffy. He is the lead developer for Casual Steps, and he was also the previous founder of Career Job Finder, which is a website that existed from 2012 to 2015. And then he shut it down in order to start Origin, which is a herbal supplement brand. Luke Zhang is the next uh, co-founder. And he was previously a developer at Workerpolis for two years. He was then a developer at Elimicia for another two years and a leader developer at Blockmason for one year before co-founding Loom. Uh, as I checked out their LinkedIn profiles up to this point, both of these co-founders are quite young. Okay, if you look them up, 
on LinkedIn. Their careers only started in 2012, so both of them only have six years of working experience. And both of them have less than 300 connections on LinkedIn, which is very little. And neither of them have remained in any company for more than three years so far, even the companies that they themselves founded. So I was a bit disappointed when I looked at these two resumes and I was hoping to find someone in the team with a heavier resume. And their third co-founder, Matthew Campbell, fortunately does have a much better resume and experience with him. So Matthew Campbell has been working as a programmer since 1999. He's currently also the principal of Hyperworks and he has been the principal in that company for over 11 years. So that says a lot. Okay. He was also the previous Go hacker for DigitalOcean and the technical architect for Thomas Router and more. So his, I think, is quite a solid resume that inspires confidence for me in the project. Uh, feel free to go through the rest of the team's profile yourself. The impression I got on the whole was a pretty average team, um, no one particularly outstanding, but a lot of young successful members, uh, they are going to, a lot of them, uh, this is their first blockchain project, but uh, you know, definitely this is a team with well-balanced roles and it's a big team, you know. There are better teams with better resumes out there, but hey, there are also worse teams with worse resumes. Uh, I think this is pretty average in terms of as far as teams go. But the important thing, I guess, for me is that they already have a working product, which means that regardless of the resume of the team, they can produce results. These are their advisors, and I'll just go through a couple of the advisors. The first one is Ruben Liu, who is a co-founder of MW Partners Group, which is a blockchain consulting firm that is based in Singapore. He's also an advisor for One Ledger, which is an ICO that we covered recently. And other blockchain projects that he has previously been involved in as a community manager includes Utras, Quantstem, and Zilliqa. So these are very notable projects in the blockchain space. Another advisor of theirs is Yen Trin So, who works in marketing operations in LinkedIn itself. He's also a current senior manager in targeting and technology of LinkedIn, and he was previously involved in marketing for Amazon Web Services as well. So you can go through the rest of the advisor list yourself, but they definitely come across as a small but very competent and impressive advisor team. Now, the project doesn't have a roadmap. They don't believe in white papers or roadmaps. And if you go through their websites and their Medium articles, you will pick up very, um, um, how do you say, unusual statements that say things like, we have quite a few secret announcements that we don't want to reveal yet because we're Loom Network and that is how we roll. So, and as you can see above, you know, the team advisor list has a mystery zombie profile that just leads to a zombie, the, the crypto zombie game, which is really quite irrelevant to the advisor profile, I thought. Uh, and they say things like, you know, we don't believe in white papers or roadmaps. So I, I get the impression that as a project or as a team, they are trying very hard to make a statement that they are alternative in the way they do things. Uh, I don't know, is it a good thing or bad thing? Probably it's neither. Okay, it's just different and it will appeal to some, but maybe not to others. If you have been following our channel, you will know though that I am big on roadmaps. Roadmaps aren't just to announce upcoming events. You know, roadmaps are one of the only points in the entire project where a team has accountability to the community. A roadmap states milestones and timeframes to achieve those milestones that the community can hold the team to. So it communicates to the co community, first of all, that the, the team has a long-term big picture plan. And secondly, also by hitting the milestones at the set time, it accounts to the community that the team is working hard behind the scenes. Now, without a roadmap, the team can be taking token investors' money and then going on the holiday. And as a token investor, you would have no way of knowing that the team is working or not working because there is no milestones to keep track of. Also, if there is no overarching big picture, you don't know as an investor whether or not the team has a big plan or whether they're just winging it as they go along. Now, I'm sure that the Loom team is a good team, okay, and they won't skive the way I was describing. That was an analogy to say that in general, no matter how alternative a project is, it's, I think it's generally a good idea for any project to still have a roadmap as accountability for the community. That being said, even though they don't have a roadmap, in one of their recent Medium articles, they have announced a few interesting things coming up. The main events are... They have a Loom SDK beta release that's coming up in June, so next month. And also in June, they will have a Plasma support being added to SDK. And over the next few months, they will have three blockchain games being released in-house. 
So these are huge announcements. And I think that Loom as a project is going to have a very big June coming up. So for that reason, when we do our top coins for the month of June video in a few days time, you will find Loom amongst our top picks. I do apologize for the background noise, guys. It's a heavy rain in my place suddenly. So um, there's a bit of a background raining noise. Finally, let's finish by taking a look at pricing. When Loom first opened on the markets in March, they opened at $0.08 cents USD. Currently, they're sitting at $0.40 cents USD. So they have literally 5x in just two months. So this project definitely has a lot of momentum and attention. Now, given the upcoming events, if the market is good, I think that this is a coin that's definitely going to show good returns over the next couple of months. Their market cap currently is already very close to $290 million, and that's pretty high for a new coin. But hey, if they can solve Ethereum scalability problem and Ethereum is worth like, you know, 60 billion, then I think the sky's the limit for this project. They could potentially be a multi-billion dollar project. And I definitely see this coin 10xing in the next couple of years. The project hasn't had enough history to trace support lines and resistance line, but just looking at the graph and the recent market, I'm guessing, and this is really a guess, that 50 cents is probably a strong line of resistance or support. And anywhere around the price point of 40 cents or below is probably a good entry point. This is just my guess and my personal opinions and my thoughts for myself. I'm not a professional or financial advisor, so please always do your research and make your own decisions. In conclusion, I think that Loom is a great project. I really like the tech of this project and I like what they are trying to achieve and have already achieved. I think this is a project that is delivering a much needed solution for Ethereum, the biggest blockchain platform in the market. And I think that Loom is going to be big in the crypto space in the future, definitely within the Ethereum community. A couple of things that I will be paying attention to is how much their team reacts to situations and keep themselves accountable to the community, especially without a roadmap. And also, I think the economics is still quite flawed. So I would be very interested to see how the team will make any adjustments, if any, in the near future. The truth is most investors will probably just look at the tech and the working product and then they will fall more into the project. So despite my concerns, I definitely think that this is a coin that is still going to have decent gains in the short term. So that's it for me, guys. Thank you so much for joining us. Let us know in the comments below what you think of Loom and if you like this project. If you found this video helpful, do smash that like and subscribe. Do also join our Telegram group to find out more new and promising coins like Loom. And there's also a donation link below if you would like to support me and this channel. Have a fantastic weekend, guys, and we will catch up with you again very, very soon.